Hey guys, I'm just going to film this video for our, our financial reporting class. Um, I'm not sure how long it's going to be, but it is going to be a bit longer than normal because this is quite a large question with a lot of calculations. Um, you'll probably recognize it as question one from assignment one, and I know this question sort of gave a lot of us some trouble. Um, I'm going to go through all the parts of it with you, and we're going to do it together, and I'm just going to walk you through the whole thing. Um, I have made these sort of charts and um, a very simplified income statement to help us go through the calculations. And so you can kind of see exactly how all the math works and where the numbers are coming from. Another thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to do the T accounts for the warranty expense and the development costs. Now, the teacher does do the T accounts in her lessons, but her T accounts tend to come pre-filled out and it can kind of hard, be hard to see where she's getting the numbers from. And I think if we build them as we go, and I sort of walk you through them as we go year by year, they'll be a lot simpler to understand. So with that said, I'm just kind of going to jump right in and we're going to start doing this question. So the first thing, as always, is we're just going to read the question and we're going to pull out all the information that we need and see, like, see what it tells us. So we're told that this is our first year of operations and our income before taxes was 680,000. So right away we can fill that in, our income before taxes. And this sort of list of accounts isn't necessary. I'm just kind of using it because it makes it easier to link to things. So um, we're told we acquired capital assets worth 2.8 million. This is our building, our plant, our assembly line, um, anything that we're, we depreciated in as a capital asset. Um, this is a very simplified number and a way of handling it, but it works, it, it's just kind of get us used to the question. So on our capital assets, we took $163,000 in depreciation and $140,000 in CCA, and we can just fill those in. We had a warranty expense of $175,000, but we can see that we only paid out of the amount we set aside $83,000. So we didn't pay out the full amount of our warranty expense. Next, we made a political contribution of $34,000, and we had $81,000 of development costs. And uh, since this was the first year we were open, let's just say that everybody took their jobs really seriously and no one went golfing. We can enter a zero there. We didn't pay any golf dues in year one. So now that we have all of these numbers, and sort of this is all of the information we've pulled out of the question, the money we've made and the money we've spent, we can add these into our income statement. And you can kind of cheat a little because I have already formatted and typed everything out to save us time. So you can see what we're going to subtract and what we're going to add, but let's just do it together anyways. So the first thing we had was accounting income of $680,000. We had our political contribution, and this will never go away or change, so it's not a temporary difference, it's a permanent one. So that adds on, and now it's, now it's done once we've added it back on. Next, we had our temporary differences. We added appreciation. 163,000. We subtract the amount of CCA we took, and we can just enter this as a negative by pressing equals negative 140. You don't necessarily have to do it, but it makes it a lot easier to just sum this column in one go. We're going to add our warranty expense. We're going to subtract our warranty cost, and again, we'll make it negative. And finally, we're going to subtract our development costs since we can see that those can be capitalized for accounting purposes. And this is going to give us our income tax payable, and that is actually one third of our entry. You can see we, we owe $209,440 in income tax. And we can fill that in actually right now. We can press equals, negative, because we would never show a negative number in our journal entries. And put our, put our total there. So we're one third of the way done. But now we need to know about the temporary differences and this is how we'll get a deferred income tax payable. 
And in this particular case, we need to calculate the temporary difference of three accounts, our capital assets, our warranty, and our development costs. And we can start doing this with our capital assets. So our capital assets are going to equal 2.8 million minus the depreciation in CCA. So starting with the tax basis, what the tax basis means is that's how much the government thinks the asset is worth. And the government is kind of the one whose opinion really matters in this case. So we can press equals the cost of our asset minus the amount of CCA we took, because you can see over here that the tax basis is linked to CCA. It's when we depreciate through the tax basis, we do it through CCA. When we depreciate through the accounting basis, we do it by depreciation. That's what's on our books. So as far as the government is concerned, this our capital assets are worth two million six hundred and sixty thousand dollars. For the accounting basis, if this is sort of the book value that we have on our books, our capital assets are worth the amount that they initially started minus the amount of depreciation we took. So according to us, the accountant, those assets are worth less than the government thinks they do. Although in the end, these assets will both be depreciated to zero. Meaning, because we didn't take as much CCA as we could, we paid more taxes than we had to. Somewhere included in this number is money that we could have saved if we had taken the same amount of depreciation that we took CCA. In effect, well, you can see here if we subtract our tax, our accounting basis from our tax basis, we could have taken an additional $23,000 in CCA, but we didn't. And effectively, we ended up paying taxes on that amount of money, which is expressed somewhere in here. And that means we won't have to pay tax at some point in the future because we've already paid this tax. They can't tax us on it again. So this is going to create an asset because this number is positive. We paid more taxes than we had to, which makes us eligible to pay less taxes in the future. And the other thing is that because we know the year two tax rate, it's been enacted, it's 30%. Going into the future, this money is going to be taxed at 30%. So if, when figuring out the deferred tax, we're not going to use this 28. We're going to use this 30%. So this temporary, so the deferred tax is equal to our temporary difference times 30%, or 0 0.3. So you can see the amount of deferred tax is 69, sorry, $6,900. And finally, since this is our first year of operations our opening balance in each account is zero. Our company didn't exist before this date, so we didn't have any open accounts. The amount of adjustment is equal to the deferred tax minus our opening balance. So in this case, it's the same because our opening balance is zero. So for our warranty and development costs, the tax basis will always be zero, so we can simply fill that in in those two. Now we need to know what the accounting basis is. What's the number we have on our books for these? So in this case, we're going to start our T accounts so you can kind of start to see how we build them. So let's just play pretend and we'll imagine that it's January the 1st. And the manager of our factory comes to us and he tells us that since we have this one year warranty policy, he's going to have to do work to fix people's and let's say cars. So he's going to have to replace parts in cars, and he estimates that in the whole year, he's going to need $175,000 to fix all of our customers' broken cars. And he's a smart guy, so we agree with him. And we tell him he can have the $175,000. So we open this account, and we put $175,000 in it for him. So now let's imagine that it's June the 30th doesn't really matter what date it is because we're sort of making the scenario up but let's say something in our cars is faulty in the summer everybody's car breaks down in June and they come to us to get their cars fixed and in total it costs the manager of our factory and the people on our assembly line $83,000 to fix everyone's car so they pay out the $83,000 they do $83,000 of work however you choose to look at it and that money comes from this warranty expense account, what we've already set aside to take into account that we know we're going to have to fix the cars we made. 
So now it's December the 31st and let's say Dece it's our year end and let's say that's December 31st. How much is left in the warranty expense account? Well, in this case, we're going to subtract our debits from our credits and we have $92,000 left in our account. And that is going to become the amount that is our accounting basis. And because this is a credit, it's going to be negative. So if we subtract um, a, a negative number from zero, we're actually going to get a positive number. So sort of what this is saying is um, this amount got added back into our taxable income. So we got taxed for, so sorry, so we got, we added this $175,000 back in and we didn't take the whole thing back out. So there was $92,000 that we paid tax on that we'll eventually be able to deduct. Meaning this is an asset to us. And we can actually just drag this down. This will multiply this by 30. And we'll see 30% of that is our deferred tax asset. So again, this is um, this is taxes we won't have to pay in the future because we, we made our warranty expense so high. We, we didn't spend the entire amount of the warranty. So finally, we have our development costs. So in this case, um, whoever is in charge of development comes to us, and let's just say it's January 1st. He comes to us right after the factory manager leaves our office. And he tells us that for the development costs we're gonna incur this year, he needs $81,000. And we believe him. We give him the $81,000. And we can actually just link to this cell because there's no more in this account right now. And zero minus a positive number. So we've deducted this amount, but eventually we are going to have to pay taxes on it. So we've deducted this whole amount, but we this is money that we will eventually have to pay taxes on. So this is a temporary difference that's a liability. We've, we haven't paid these taxes, but we will have to pay them in the future. And we're actually not going to be taxed on them at 28% because remember, the tax rate's gone up. We're going to be taxed on this amount at 30%. And we can drag this down again. So we can see that the total of our deferred tax, because this is a positive number, we, we do still have a positive number, this is an asset. So this is extra taxes we paid that we're going to be eligible not to pay in the future. And we can actually just link that right here. And our income tax expense at this point is going to be a plug. It's going to be equal to our credits minus our debits to make them balance. And it's going to be $199,240. And that is year one finished. That's everything that we need to do or know for year one. So sort of right before we jump into year two, I'm actually going to pull up the year two information here. And we're going to finish out these two T accounts, sort of so you can understand where the numbers for the year two version of this chart are coming from. So um, so now let's say that it's January the first year two. That doesn't look great, but that's OK. Um, and the, the factory manager comes to us, and he tells us that he needs $270,000 to pay the warranties for this year. And even though he didn't actually do a great estimate last year, we still think he's right and we give him the $270,000. Then, and let's just say it's June again, everybody's car breaks down in June and customers come to us and this year we do a lot more warranties. We do almost triple the, well more than triple the amount we spent $345,000 paying back our customers for, let's, faulty cars, whatever we screwed up that we have to do on the warranty. We do $345,000 warranty work. So at the end of the year when we close our books, so let's say this is December 31, year two. Um, we need to see how much we have left in this account. So in this case, we're going to add our credits together minus our debits or the money we paid. And we're going to see we have $17,000 left in this account. And that is going to be for year two. That's going to be our accounting basis. That's how much from an accounting perspective we have in this account. 
So now we can kind of do the same thing with the development costs. Um, let's say it's, you know, the 1st of January, but this is year two. The development cost guy comes to us and tells us he needs $220,000. And we tell him, okay, you can have it. We got money to, we've got money to burn, I suppose. And we give him this money. We give him the $22,000. Sorry, the $220,000. And then let's say we go on vacation and the new accountant amortizes some of this money. You're not necessarily supposed to do that, but let's just say for we amortize some of this. Um, so now we're closing our books. And we need to see how much we have in this account. So it's going to be equal to the ending balance plus the amount we add to the account in this year. And in this case, minus our credits. And you're going to see we have $249,000 in this account. And this number here is where we're going to get our accounting basis for year two for development costs. It's not as simple as just using the temporary differences. We've got to look back on what we did before and see how much is in the accounts. Um, you can't just use the temporary differences or the adjustment and sort of this is how you're going to do it. That's sort of how you should think of it. So with those two things done, let's look at year two. So we do have some information in year two. We can see that our income before taxes was 1.7 million 40,000, sorry. Our capital assets we don't need to worry about. We'll link to them from above. This year we took $163,000 in depreciation and our capital cost allowance was $400,000. Uh, our warranty costs, in this case, that's the warranty expense. Sometimes they do use different wording for these, but it's important to just read the question. So sometimes they actually might use warranty costs to list the cost paid out. But if we read further, we see that the actual cash expenditure, the amount we paid for these warranties was this amount. So this means this needs to be our warranty expense. So our warranty expense was $270,000. And our warranty costs were $345,000. We didn't make any political contributions, um, but we did occur additional development costs, $220,000 worth. And finally, we amortized some of those costs, $52,000 worth. And finally, we did pretty well this year. We more than doubled our sales, so some of our executives went golfing. And they spent $39,000 golfing. So now that this is all of the money we spent and made in year two, and we can kind of just use this to fill in our imaginary income statement here. So our accounting income was $1.7 million. We had $39,000 in golf dues. We would add our depreciation. Remember, we're going to make this number negative to subtract our CCA. We'd add our warranty expense. We would subtract our warranty costs. We would subtract our development costs. And because for tax purposes, we can't amortize those development costs, we would add them back in. And uh, oops, you see I've got this actually, oops. You can see I've got this set up to automatically link, but let's just delete that. Let's just go through the whole question. So this does give us our income tax payable. Essentially, this number here, 30% of this number, and you can see how I have it set up to be 30%. And that is one part, that is one third of our um, journal entry. So now we need to do this for year two, and this is a tiny bit more complicated. First, the warranty and development costs will always be zero for a tax basis, so we don't need to worry about that. We need to remember, though, that our depreciation and CCA are going to accumulate. The value of our capital assets will continue to go down until they reach zero. So the amount here is not going to be 2.8 million minus these amounts. The amount here is going to be the year one amount. So it's going to be equal to this amount minus the new CCA. In this case, 400,000. For the accounting basis, 
this is going to be equal to the amount we had before minus the new depreciation. Our warranty is not going to be equal to the temporary difference like it was before, but it's going to be equal to the amount in the account. And again, because we have money in this account, that means that this is money that we could have taken out or not added to the account. So we paid tax on this money, but we didn't have to. And that is effectively going to end up being an asset. And then finally, in the development costs, we have $249,000. So the temporary difference is equal to the tax basis minus the accounting basis. And that will be true of all of our, um, all of our three, three accounts. And the deferred tax, just like before, this is going to equal the temporary difference times the amount of taxes. In this case, 30% or 0 0.3. And we can just drag this down now that we've got the first one. And finally, the opening balance is equal to the adjustment from last year. And because we've did, done this before, we can just link the cells and drag them down. So this year, our adjustment is going to be equal to our deferred, the deferred tax minus the opening balance for each account. And once again, we can just drag this down to do it automatically. And we see we get a negative number this year. So in this case, this is a credit. This is a liability. This is taxes that we took. This is de deductions that we took that we didn't have to, that we will have to pay in the future. Um, so because this number is negative, it goes in the credit column. So we're going to press equals negative so as not to put a negative number in our journal. And this is going to be our deferred income tax. We owe money that we're going to have to pay in the future. And meaning our income tax is, going to, again, a plug, is going to be equal to our credits. And we're going to see it's $533,700. And that is sort of everything in this question. That is how you would figure everything out and do all the journal entries, and I hope this helped you.